Here's a problem which has radicals, just they're not showing the radical. They are, they're just showing it as an exponent, which is a rational exponent. And that's okay, because looking at it like this may make it a little bit easier. Um, there I've got a 1 half for the 4 minus x and for the 3. So if I wanted to get rid of a 1 half and just make it a 1, because that, that's the exponent that I really want here is just an exponent of 1, which really is just for that binomial with the x. What I would do is I would square both sides. As if it were a square root, right? No, and uh, it, it is going to matter just a tiny bit. So this goes back to the power of power rule stuff. That 2 has a power of 1. So I really got 2 to the power of 1 times 2, which is 2. And then I've got that 4 minus x. And up here we can see 1 half times 2, that would just be 1 which is great, that's what we wanted. Uh, we just don't have to show an exponent of one. Now, well, this is equal to three to the power of one half. Once again, we're just considering the powers here. One half times two, that would be three to the power of one. But once again, we don't, we don't really need to show that one there. So from here, let's evaluate two squared, which is four, and this is multiplied by 4 minus x. It should equal 3. And when I, well, ah, okay. You could distribute that 4. I don't want to do that much work, so I'm just going to divide both sides by 4. See how the 4's cancel out right there? And then I'm left with 4 minus x equals 3 fourths. Yes, I do have to deal with a fraction, but I guess maybe I didn't have to distribute is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's something you're going to have to decide. The answer will still be the same no matter what you do. Um, now I'm going to need to subtract 4 from both sides. And I've got a negative x equals 3 fourths. That 4, I'm going to make it a 16 fourths, which is what 4 is. But I have common denominators now. That's going to give me a negative 13 fourths. And if I just take the opposite of both of these, then I find that x equals a positive 13 fourths. Yeah, this goes back to the old rule with, I think we used an a and a b to the power of m. This is the same as, I guess I don't need parentheses there. This is the same as a to the power of m times b to the power of m. So it's kind of like we distributed this m into the parentheses, just into the exponents though. Yep, we do need to check. So let's go and rewrite the original. All right, for this problem, um, by the way, when I rewrite this, it may be easier to see this using the radicals. Of course, we didn't use them when we solved for it, but it means the same thing. So I've got 2 times the square root of 4 minus the x, which right now we've got a 13 fourths. We just need this to be true. So 13 fourths. And this should equal the square root of 3. Now I've got the subtraction of a fraction there, so I need the denominators to be the same. Meaning, once again, I'm going to make 4 16 fourths. So this becomes 2 times the square root of 16 minus 13. That would give us 3 with that common denominator 4. This should equal the square root of 3, right? Well, what do we do from here? Uh, hopefully we're not stumped at this point because last time we learned if we have the square root of a fraction, we can split it up. So I'm going to take 2 times the square root of 3, and that would be divided by the square root of 4. This should equal the square root of 3, right? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And right here, the, these twos should cancel out. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And what we end up with is the square root of 3 equals the square root of 3. That right there is a true statement. And we can know then that our answer 
right here is correct. Yeah, so how do we get that 16 fourths? Yeah, that was 4 over 1. And then I multiplied the 4 and the 1 by 4, yeah.